Hey there, folks. It's slate time. So I've done quite a few videos on this previously, but I think it's finally time for at least one more video, uh, this time with the final production everything. Uh, so a lot of the other videos I've, I've shown off, like pre-production shells, pre-production kits, uh, the whole process where we were trying to figure out, you know, what screws it would come with, etc., etc. So I wanted to do one more video with everything as it was or as it will be um, if you were to order a kit for yourself. So packaging is going to be a little bit different um, depending on what specifically you order. Uh, that is to say they might not come in a case like this. In fact, they probably won't. This specific case I just picked up off my uh, out of my project bench to kind of keep everything together. But uh, if you order the shell kit and the um, backlight kit, you'll get these specific things. So to make a slate, these parts are what are what is necessary. So bare minimum, you need to buy the shell. Without the shell, you can't make a slate. It is what it is. In this specific instance, I went with purple. And the shell comes with the face plate, this back plate here that covers the back of the screen, and then this little bag of accessories. Now, there is no rear housing to the slate. The idea is that you reuse one of the plastic ones from your original SP or, you know, you buy another cons or uh, another housing that you can pull the shell from, mix and match. I I personally like that. I thought it was a neat idea, so that's what I went with. There are no plans at this time to make a matching metal rear housing for these. But anyway, in this bag, you will have between two and three things. Uh, bare minimum, you're going to have a bunch of these little black screws, two of these metal rods, and then depending on how specifically your slate was packed, uh, you will either have the light pipe in the little baggie with it, or it will be pre-installed in the shell. I wager most of them are going to be pre-installed in the shell, uh, but some of them are a little bit slippy and might fall out, so they might get included in the bag instead. Uh, I'll walk you through slipping that in and, and getting it installed. Uh, the other thing that is mostly sort of kind of necessary uh, is going to be the slate backlight kit. Now, the slate backlight kit is going to get packed into three different bags, uh, most likely depending on the batch. As we get into the later batches, um, bags might get consolidated a little bit, but uh, more or less you've got your screen here. Let me uh, pop that open. And this is the uh, the key part of what makes the slate a slate, is we had these uh, brand new, newly manufactured LG LCDs uh, fully bonded to these custom glass lenses we made. And so, um, I, I mean, I'm saying they're custom, and they are, uh, but it's just the same DMG glass shape, so if you ever wanted to make your own custom lens, uh, you can do that pretty easily. Uh, but then you'll have to figure out how to bond the, the LCD to the lens itself. I do have a video on that, but that's a little bit more um, in-depth than I intend to go in this video, so we'll... You'll have to check that out in your own time. I'll go ahead and link it in the description. Uh, we also get a adapter ribbon, same as the SP version of the kit. Uh, we get some insulation film for the uh, adapter PCBs and whatnot. Again, same as the SP version of the kit. We've got three wires this time, which is unique to the Slate kit and the Game Boy Advance kits, but not on the SP kit. Uh, they also pack it with a little bit of double-sided tape. Not 100% sure the purpose on that. I think they intend for you to stick the adapter board down to the screen, but it's really not necessary. And it only goes to make things more difficult if you ever need to take it apart. And then here we have the adapter board itself. Uh, now with some of these, with a lot of the earlier ones, uh, we showed this off with some touch sensors. This specific kit does not have any touch sensors whatsoever. 
uh, which means that for brightness control, soldering is required. Uh, also, other versions of this backlight kit did include like a color palette slash filter feature, um, but unfortunately we were having some trouble getting that to work, so we just cut it entirely, and based off of the survey, we did, uh, I don't think it's gonna be missed. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and get started, get this built, and we'll move on here. So tonight's donor is going to be this perfectly stock. I definitely didn't pull the bottom off this at some point SP. Um, but first thing we want to do before even tearing it down is we want to make sure the Jesus thing works because if for some reason there is a problem, um, we should probably know before we put it together. Uh, good Lord, the screen in this thing is horrifying. Um, but if I go into the key input test, I did already test this off screen. I could see that all the buttons are working, so on and so forth. Oh, there we go. Now you can see it with the light. Uh, we heard the sound when I booted it up, and obviously it's booting games. So I'm going to call that good enough. But like I said, you should always make sure you're starting with a working SP. But that's on you to do the testing. All right. So we will start by tearing down this SP. There is one JIS screw in the battery compartment to hold the battery cover on. Uh, and then there are six tri-point, tri-wing, Y-bits, four long, two short, need to remove all of them to pull the bottom of this SP off. The slate uses completely different screws than the stock SP, so set these aside if you ever intend to put this shell back together, which I do specifically, but if you're assembling the slate, that might not be the case. Uh, you don't need them to assemble the slate, you just need them for the SP. Lost one of the uh, axles. Took that apart. Drop that back in there. All right. And we'll set that aside for a moment. And now we are left with the bare motherboard. Let's go ahead and pop that out. Three more JIS screws. and flip that up, detach the ribbon, and the motherboard is free. I will also need to grab a speaker out of here. I'm going to leave this specific one in the shell because I fully intend on putting this back together and using it as a test bed for another SP, but I've got another speaker here that we can use. All right, and so out of this, we don't need any of the rest of this hardware. You don't need the light pipe. You don't need these buttons um, unless you want to reuse the specific buttons. I did design my slate shell to work with regular SP buttons, and you can certainly do that no problem, but in this specific case, I just don't want to use these specific buttons. All right, and before we get on to the slate part, we will want to test the backlight kit and make sure that there are no problems there. So I'm gonna slip this into the lower housing, battery back in, battery cover on, just to prevent the battery from falling out. And now we're gonna bench test our kit here. that go like that? Yeah, that does go like that. So on the ribbon side, or the uh, converter board side, pins go down. And then we can flip that over. And then this is supposed to fold, but 
Uh, since we're not installing it in an SP and we're instead installing it in a slate, the folding is a little bit different and we don't really want to fold it until after we test it. Anyhow, so we'll set that just like that. Get that plugged in there. And I will drop my test cart in there. And if all goes well, it should just work. And indeed it does, all my buttons and such still work, no problems there. And that's pretty much all we need to test from here. So now we can just drop this in and continue with the install, but I am going to take a quick detour and we are going to wire up the button controls because why not? Um, I imagine if anyone out there wants to do the button controls for theirs, then, uh, you know, be helpful to have this. But if you don't want to use the brightness controls, um, you can skip this step. This does not require soldering. Uh, I am going to trim the leads on these wires just a little bit because it's, they're always trimmed so long. And there's a lot of exposed copper that we don't need to expose. All right. Zoom in here. And so we can use any three buttons that we want except for the brightness button. The slate does not carry over the brightness button. Uh, but we can use any other three buttons. The common um, the common combination is select L and R, but you could always do like start up and down, um, L up and down, you know, however you want to do it. In this specific case, we're going to use select L and R though. L is this little touchpad or test pad in between these two components right above the up button. If you look, there's a little arrow and a small white box that says R54 and TP9. Uh, R54 refers to that resistor right above the test pad and then TP9 refers to that golden pad right there. That's exactly what we want. So I am gonna go ahead and tin that with some fresh solder. Next up, we want R, which is this third test pad down on this group of four on the right next to the connector. Uh, you can see the labels. The labels get kind of funky here. You have to like follow the arrows and follow the boxes, uh, but it is this fourth one down. Tin that up as well. And then for select, we have these two test pads right here, or I guess three right next to start. Um, but the two on top are for start and select. We want the left one for select. Again, you can use any buttons you want. The combination does not matter too much as long as you remember what you soldered to. Also, try not to touch the hot bit of your soldering iron because it's hot. In case you're wondering what that noise I just made was. <laughs> That is not the greatest tool. Let's fix that. There we go. On the backlight side of things, here are our three pads to solder to. In my specific case, mine has already had the pads tinned, um, but that's that's because I was messing with this before the video. Uh, but either way, we will solder up our L button to the L pad. Our R button to the R pad. and our select button to the select pad. Actually, it might have made more sense to solder these the other way around so that they're not getting folded. Let's flip those around.
or rather they're going to get folded anyway, but why not have fewer folds? Cool. That should be it for the soldering. From here the assembly should go pretty darn quick. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and flip this back because we want to use, well I really don't think we need to, but it came with it, play it safe, I'll install the film that it says to install. like that and we're almost there next I will go ahead and get this ribbon cable plugged in and seated we do not need to solder to that pad on the uh, ribbon cable everything is already taken care of and here's where it gets a little tricky so I personally think it's a lot easier to get everything wired up and connected beforehand, and you can even test it if you want. Mine should still be working, but select R, select L, does brightness, easy peasy. But as far as getting this installed, the screen has to be inserted from the front. We can just feed it through and then insert it. But first, before doing that, We have seen some slates get, um, I don't know, just a little dirty in handling, I guess. Uh, so it might make sense when you first get yours, or rather when you're about to install the screen, get a cotton bud, get a little bit of IPA on it, and then just work your way around the, um, the part where the lens is gonna adhere to, just so we can make sure that the uh, adhesive has the best chance it has. I did already go ahead and clean this one up, but all right. So now we will pull off the adhesive there, or the paper, I guess. And there, it is only on two sides. Do not be concerned, we have found that that is more than enough. And then, just kind of slide it through so that You've got everything on the, uh, here, let me, let me, let me, let me repeat that. So I've still got everything wired up and connected. I'm going to go ahead and hold it sideways and up at an angle. Put it through the hole in the slate so that I have this whole assembly on the other side. And then we hinge in the left side. I'm going to go ahead and remove this because it's not lined up properly. Okay. Then hinge in the left side, and then you can drop down the screen on the right, and then just push it down along the edges to make sure that it is adhered. And Bob Gianti, you're halfway there. So now I'm going to go ahead and flip this whole thing over. And we're going to work on the slate side of things. If I can get this out, there we go. Alright, before continuing with this, I do want to make a slight detour and uh, talk about the shoulder button axles. So on a stock SP, you have your shoulder buttons with the springs pretty much like this inside the button, and then the pin holding everything together. You slip that in there, slip the spring on, and then there is a catch on the bottom half of the shell for the axle, and then if we look at the top half of the shell, there's a catch up here for the other side. Slate doesn't have these top side catches because that's where the screen sits. Uh, so instead, where's my baggie? Here it is. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and dump that whole thing out, make a total mess of things, try not to mix your screws up. Right. 
So the slate comes with these two pins here. And if you compare them with the stock SP pins, you might notice they're about the same length, maybe a little bit shorter. Uh, they should be about two millimeters shorter by design. Uh, and that is intentional. The reason being, uh, now this mostly applies to the non-laminated versions. With the laminated versions, the tolerances are a lot better, uh, but I have still seen some of these longer ones cause problems, so, you know, better safe than sorry. But uh, on some of the earlier builds, we found that these pins would poke the back of the screen and cause marks, so we just decided to include shorter ones. And because there is no catch on the top half of the shell, my preferred solution was to glue these pins in with a little bit of super glue. Just put a little drop on there, on the end, and then drop it into the hole, and give it a few minutes to set up. Now I have sent out quite a few slates as uh, like demo units. Uh, I've had have had some people trying to test for me and give me feedback, and most of them do not glue these pins, and none of them have reported problems. I personally like gluing them because it's a little bit of peace of mind, and I've found that with these pins, you know, really tacked into place, you get a little bit more feedback out of the shoulder buttons, which. You know, on an SP is kind of important because SPs have really crummy shoulder buttons. Um, slate does nothing to improve that. Uh, if anything, it doesn't, does, it might make it a little bit worse, but if you glue that in, the uh, changes are almost completely mitigated. Anyway, I want to do that so that we can set this aside and continue working while that glue sets. So let us go back to the slate itself. I'm going to go ahead and flip the motherboard up because I got to install my light pipe. Uh, I mentioned this earlier, but most uh, most slates will probably come with that light pipe pre-installed, but if not, you just drop it in. It's pretty easy to get in there. It only fits the one way, uh, and if for some reason it cracks into two pieces, that is not a problem whatsoever. It's It does get pretty thin uh, in, in spots. Uh, and the only reason it is one piece in the first place is just to make handling it a little bit easier. So if it cracks, just gotta have the... Yeah, I can't even get it out now. Um, not too big a deal. All right, next up, we can go ahead and install our buttons. Uh, like I said, the slate is designed to use stock SP buttons, so you can install whatever buttons you want and then your membranes. Or if you opted to get the uh, aluminum buttons, you can do that too. Uh, the difference between these aluminum buttons and the plastic buttons uh, that SP comes with stock is these aluminum buttons don't use a membrane. You just drop it in without the membrane and that's it. Plastic buttons still need the membrane. So use whichever you want. In my specific case, because I'm going for a specific color scheme, which may or may not make sense to you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the plastic buttons for now. It's not to say the aluminum ones are bad. In fact, quite the opposite. They are very good buttons, just in this case. I only have brass and silver, so it is what it is. I shall get more. Actually, no, that's not true. I think I have one of every color. But I've got I've got an ulterior motive with this build. There's uh, there's other things we'll be doing down the line. It'll it'll make more sense at that time, I think. Okay, get the membrane in there. Get the speaker. If your SP had a little black cloth above the speaker in the housing, you'll want to keep that. If not, I mean, it's no real loss uh, to go without, but I recommend keeping it if you can, just because um, it will help protect the speaker from damage long-term. Now, if you did the wiring, there is a little bit more attention we have to take here. So 
I'm gonna get a small piece of captain. So that this wire for the select button stays exactly where I put it. Now I want to slap that down right there. That's not going to work too well. But we can put that right there. And it does not matter that it is going over the screw hole because we can just poke through it. But it does matter that it was going over the speaker contacts. But in this case, this is just, we want to route this wire past the membrane for the A and B buttons, but also past the speaker so that it doesn't get pinched. And it should be good just like that. You just follow the outline on the motherboard Anywhere there's this white silk screen, you don't want the wire. These rest, the rest of the wires up here are pretty safe to leave as is. And I believe we can just drop this in. Actually, no, I think I'm skipping a step. Let's take a peek here. Yep. So unfortunately, things are still a little tight and we do have to trim these pins for the shoulder button flush. So right by the volume wheel or volume slider, trim that shoulder button nice and flush. You don't need to touch the other one, but you can if you want. And then that'll just sit right in there. Before we start installing screws though, I'm going to push this ribbon flat and install the rear plate, which in this case, oh, hang on, a sticker. It's kind of weird with my wiring where it is, but we'll make it work. So we need to give this ribbon a little M shape up at the top. And then push it flat. We don't really want to crease it just, you know, enough that it it'll keep that shape when we squish it down. And then drop the rear plate in. And pretty much nothing is going to stay in place until you start adding some screws. But Should be pretty straightforward. We'll just take our first screw, send it home right there. Oh, all of these screws are the same length, so you don't need to pay attention to that. Just make sure you use the new screws uh, because the old screws are designed to thread into plastic, whereas the new screws are a different thread pitch. Um, and you don't want to mix and match. It will cause you more problems than you need. Up through my tape there. I have noticed in some SPs the holes in the motherboard are a little bit too small for these screws and the screws will be a little bit tight going in. It is not a problem whatsoever. You can you can uh, you can send them in. Um, it's not a problem. The only thing is there's uh, there's tolerances and sometimes they fall a little bit too shy and it just makes those holes a little bit too small. But anyway, three screws, two screws. I'm gonna flip it over and admire our handiwork. We're almost there. Uh, and now we need to swap back to the back. Those should have had plenty of time to set, so I am going to drop the spring into the shoulder button. Drop the shoulder button onto the post. Mayhaps. Is that the right one? Yeah, it is. And then swing that around and hook it on so that the button springs back. And the same thing over here. Unfortunately, one of mine is broken. Hopefully, it's 
still fine. Like I said, uh, SP shoulder buttons aren't the best as is, so I don't think it'll be too big of a problem. Anyway, got that. Make sure the square nut for the battery compartment is in there. And then uh, make sure the power switch is switched off on both sides. And then the slate goes down on top of the plastic shell. If you do it the other way, uh, power switch and other components might fall out. It's a little bit tight, but the idea is that it clicks into place. Some shells are a little bit looser than others. This one looks to be one of the looser shells. Um, but, you know, like I said, tolerances being tolerances, it does work with every manufacturer shell that I've tried so far. And then there are five more screws once you've got the back on. There are the four corners on the original back. And don't forget, you are threading into metal, so... To get the screw started, it's best to uh, push, but then reverse thread it and wait for it to... You hear how it clicks when I spin it around backwards? That clicking is the threads dropping into place. Once it clicks, you can screw it without danger of cross-threading, and the exact same concept applies to threading into plastic as well. It's just a lot easier to demonstrate with aluminum. Make sure my screws aren't too tight. I can always back them off a eighth of a turn. All right, we're pretty much done. Now we need just one more thing. I can reuse my original battery. There's not a problem with that, but, well, there's a problem with that. This is an original battery uh, from 2004, 2003. So I am going to use a Mako battery. And it's pretty simple to get one of these set up. Oh, I gotta file that down now. Again, not necessary, just a, uh, you know, while we're here. With how these PCBs are made, there's often tabs left over for manufacturing. Sometimes you have to file them, sometimes you don't, but it doesn't take more than a few seconds. Now, this is designed to wedge into this battery compartment and sit right up against those terminals. And so we want to solder the battery to it. So I am going to try and get the wiring as clean as possible. But that of course means doing some hood rat stuff. But it's okay, we'll make it work. Tin those pads. Pads are labeled, but the labels can be a little bit difficult to see because it's uh, underneath the mask. But you can see the left one has a positive, the right one has a negative. Positive is red. Oops. Got a little excited. Negative is black.
And then, slip that in there. That wedges in just like that, and then you can drop that battery in. Easy peasy. set and I have no idea if this battery has charge in it but what do you know it does all right that's pretty much it from here there's just some finishing touches uh, but I can do a quick overview of some of the features here um, it looks like the charge and link ports are pretty hard to access and in some cases they might be some docks won't work but should just plug in like normal there is enough room for normal charge cables uh, and normal link cables. Both GBA and Game Boy Color will plug in just fine. The downside, however, is that the wireless adapters and the uh, GameCube link does not work. So anything with this kind of connector is not going to work. Unfortunately, there's just no clearance. Also, for some USB-C charge mods, uh, any mod that puts the port all the way up on the against the motherboard, it's not really going to work. Uh, unfortunately, there's just not enough clearance for a USB-C cable when you plug in there. Um, now, in some cases, you can make a custom low-profile cable that'll work, but at that point, if you're using a custom cable anyway, what's, what's the point of USB-C? Um, there are some mods that center the port, though, and those do work perfectly fine. I will try and get a video out at some point of those, but until then. Anyway, I think that is about it. Um, let me plug my test cart in again. dust from when I was filing and you can see all of my buttons are working perfectly fine uh, except for that shoulder button but that's the one that was broken wasn't it oh no that's not the one that was broken oh there it goes it wasn't quite seated properly but now it is excellent and then we have brightness controls we're all set it's all done we have two more finishing touches though. I'm gonna go ahead and power that off. And the first one, you can leave it blank if you want, or you can go ahead and pull off the top lid of your old shell. Uh, trust me on this, you want a plastic tool, not a metal one, but you can take something like a plastic spudger. And in most shells, there is a little hole right here that you can press up to release the uh, emblem, much like that, except that this shell doesn't have one, so I can't do that here. That's inconvenient. Maybe I can squeeze it out anyway. Let me uh, let me work on that. All right, wasn't too bad. I was able to wedge it out with the uh, thin pry tool, uh, but once you've got that popped out, you can pop that in there if you want. I was trying to have my own custom made a while back. Um, I was hoping to have them release with the slate. I was going to have ones that said Mako on there. Uh, oh, I do have one. Like that. But unfortunately, it didn't work out. I didn't like how um, they wouldn't stay stuck down. Uh, I thought that was a problem, so we ended up skipping that. Might look into it again at a later date, but certainly not in time for the slate. And there is one more thing. So, we had this whole assembly nice and taken care of. Everything was working. We got everything cleaned up. And then we were looking at it going, gee, now all the stickers and 
everything on the bottom is upside down. I'm not gonna replace this sticker, not yet, because uh, I gotta pull this off with heat. I wanna try and save it, but the slate does come with extra stickers. We had custom gold foiled stickers made up with the uh, text oriented opposite, but the cutout the same. You can just peel that off and slap that on there. Um, I went with gold because, I don't know, I thought it looked neat. Uh, most of the other stickers come with silver foil and I, I don't know. I had a, uh, I had a brass slate in hand and figured, hey, matching sticker would be pretty sweet. So that's what we went with. And here's what they look like. Um, pretty simple. You know how to apply a sticker. It's the same as the emblem, just bigger uh, and a little bit floppier. But we did the uh, text on these custom. Uh, so many people helped me get this thing made. I hope to shout out everyone who made significant contributions. I know there were others out there, you know, ideas here and there, but everyone who helped, especially Retro Game Repair Shop for selling this thing for for taking on the burden of logistics and manufacturing and all of that and retro CNC for helping me out with so many of the prototypes and the design of this thing would not have been able to get this far without you guys um, and then we just did the label somewhat similar to how OEM labels look but I, I customized it a little uh, I, I thought it would look pretty good that way and uh, I'm really really pleased with how they came out Unfortunately, the Game Boy text on the battery cover is still going to be upside down and there is absolutely nothing that can be done about that unless you put a sticker over that too, uh, which does not come with the slate. But you can get these like Pokemon Center ones if you want. But yeah, that's it. That's all I've got. All this, all this time, all this work, we finally got something that I'm really pleased with. The screen just looks absolutely phenomenal. I am so, so, so pleased with how they came out. Um, it was it was touch and go for a while. There were things I didn't like. Uh, there were some legitimate concerns and unfortunately some setbacks, but in the end, we got it. It is fully laminated. There is no air gap. The LCD is bonded straight to the panel. It is the nicer option of all of the um, LG IPS panels we could pick from. Full custom lens. It's just, it's the whole package, man. I'm just absolutely. Uh, huh. That's unfortunate. It's one of the reasons this game ended up in my junk bin in the first place. It does that on on occasion. It works most of the time, though. Go figure, there it goes again. That's okay. I've got an even better Pokemon than World. One that's in English that I'm actually playing. Uh-oh, that's not in English. That's a problem. Well, like I said, this is why you test your SP before starting so that you know when uh, there's problems, what it is. But that's okay. That's not okay. I'll fix that. That's a problem for a different day. But there you go. Pretty neat, right? I'm pretty pleased with how this thing came out. Let's see what the problem is. There is a memory address failure. Cool. It fails the test. That's fine. I'll pull this apart. We'll get it fixed. Um, and we'll go from there. But anyway, that's, that's all I've got, man. Like, these things are... This is also one of the final models. I slapped this one together when the first batch of screens came in and unfortunately there was a problem that caused a delay but we got it fixed and we got them even better than before and I'm just I'm totally stoked like the, the panel gap and everything on them is just oh it's so good it came out even better than I had hoped but there we go ta-da
Oh boy. It's time to do some endgame stuff. I finally beat Pokemon Emerald. Woohoo! But yeah, I'm gonna go play these now. I'm super stoked. Um, I will go ahead and throw some links in the description if you wanna check out where to get one of these things. Uh, if you're watching this at the time the video goes up, uh, it's not really pre-orders anymore, it's just regular stock, but because of the staggered shipments, they're gonna go out in batches until uh, all of the pre-orders are fulfilled and then regular orders will go out as normal. Um, but the plan is to just stock this as a regular thing. It's not a limited order, we're only doing one batch. No, it's just, as they run out, we'll order more. It is what it is. So, no rush, grab one when you want. Um, or not. You know, I'm not your boss, I'm not your mom. But, yeah. Aluminum shell, backlight kit, you've also got the buttons, and then my... Mako batteries if you want them. Till next time. I'll catch you all later. See, this is why we do testing beforehand. This was a junk SP board that I pulled out of my pile because it had water damage. I cleaned up all the water damage, but I accidentally left a short on those last two pins right there. Let me get that cleaned up. Alright, got that solder bridge cleaned up. Let's go ahead and get this finished. Putting back together. There should be, I think I mentioned this earlier, but there should be exactly as many screws as you need to assemble it. Be careful not to over tighten the one in the cart slot. Otherwise it'll just cause the plastic in the middle to bow in and you know, you don't want that. Um, it should be pretty much impossible to poke one of these screws through, but don't quote me on that because I'm sure someone will find a way. Uh, if for some reason you lose your screws and you need replacements, here's what they are. They're just M2 screws, standard size, but we went with uh, two and a half um, millimeters in length. M2 by three should also work, but this just gave us a little bit of extra clearance. Anyway, get this seated in there again. No screw in the battery compartment. There is no screw post there. Don't put a screw in, it won't work. But it's not necessary. Try the test cart. Oh, time to charge my battery. Oh, that's better. Hey, what do you know? All passes. I bet it just boots both games now. Oh, and now my power switch is, or power light is green. Must be time to clean the power switch. I might not have done that with this one. Shut up, it's booting. It wasn't something I did with the slate. It was just me not using a working board because even though I said test your boards before taking them apart, I didn't do that. But. Huh? Huh? Alright, that's all I got. Um, thanks for being patient with me. Thanks for sticking with me. I know this was a super long journey. Um, I honestly didn't think it would take as long as it did. But there were just so many little things. You know, every time I got a new prototype, I'd, I'd spot something else that I wanted to address. And it kind of got away from me from there. But in the end, I mean, it's at hazard to guess and say, you know, it's pretty much as polished as it can be. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm sure there's little things here and there that we could, uh, could have done a little bit of a different way and gotten a slightly different result, possibly even a better one. But I'm just pleased as punch with how they came out. All of the colors look so darn fantastic. Um, the finish on them is just more consistent and better than I could have ha ever hoped for. Uh, I like that all of the colors match, at least from the ones that I've seen, the front and back, it's all the same. Uh, that isn't necessarily true with other uh, alternatives on the market, <laughs> but 
so far it's been true here. They did a fantastic job with the finishes. Um, the screens, man, the screens. I. It took us so many tries to get this right, and then suddenly they threw out all of our changes and then gave us this, but it worked perfectly anyway, so we went with it. I'm happy with it. It looks phenomenal. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. I know this was a longer video. I promise it does not really take 50 minutes to put a slate together unless you're sitting there talking through every step of the way and trying to show alternatives and blah, blah, blah. But it is pretty quick. I think it's a lot easier than just doing a regular install in an SP, especially since you could just do everything on the bench and then smush it together. You don't have to deal with like finicky ribbons, don't have to deal with hinges. And not to mention the size. I am just pleased as punch with the size. This front thickness is the same thickness as just the lower half of the regular SP without the screen. It is an order of magnitude smaller than a regular SP. Uh, weight is pretty similar. Uh, a modded SP, of course, is gonna be a little bit lighter than a stock one, but these tend to be a little bit lighter than modded SPs even, uh, or about the same weight, but because the center of gravity is so much lower and the weight is more focused into the base instead of hanging it off the top, um, it feels lighter unless you get a brass one, then these things are just heavy and they feel heavy. And if you try carrying them around in your pants pocket, you will also need a belt. Anyway, <laughs> that's all I got seriously this time. Um, I, I hope you guys, I hope you guys like it, man. I'm just so stoked for these things to start going out. Catch you all next time. <laughs>